Hi, good evening, everyone. Welcome to today's Thursday Paranormal Tales. Thank you very much for tuning in. And uh, it's been a while since uh, I have shared with you my paranormal uh, experiences. Uh, let's wait for a few more people to tune in before I start sharing. Yes, you can see my cup here. There you go. Okay. So we will wait a few more seconds for everyone to tune in. So how has the uh, MCO been for all of you? And um, if any one of you have any questions that you would like to ask me, again, feel free to uh, post it on the comments below. Yeah. Hi, Sharon. Hi, King Ho. Good evening. Hi, Christina. Hi. How is everyone doing so far? We'll wait a few more seconds, yeah, for everyone to tune in. It's been a while, so yeah, it's been a while. Because last week we were having <clears throat> Besat Day celebrations, um, so that's why on that day um, we didn't have any of our programs. Hi, David. Hello. Thank you very much for tuning in. Hi, Emily. Hello. We'll wait. We'll wait a, a few more seconds. So I hope that everyone is doing well and that you are taking precautions even though our movement control order is now conditional and we can go out uh, to run our errands and do whatever is, is um, essential. So again, do, I hope that you all take precautions, yeah? Okay, so I think that's almost there. We sh I will start talking about, well, tonight I'm going to talk about the experiences that I've had with uh, local deities. You know, in Malaysia, we have uh, local deities. Actually, all, all over the world we do, but it's just that in Asian countries, we acknowledge the local, like nature spirits, um, and there are some spirits that are more powerful and in Malaysia we call them local deities or Datuk Kong and so on and so forth. So I will share with you my experience uh, with them and also I will share with you uh, His Eminence Zara Rinpoche's experience in Nepal. Zara Rinpoche was very kind uh, to share with me his experience when he was traveling in Nepal. So. Rinpoche wrote uh, an account and I will share that with all of you afterwards. Okay, so let me see. The first that, the first experience that I had with uh, local deities was when I first joined Kachara. Because in Malaysia, as you all know, we have Datuk Kongs, we have shrines. Um, on empty land, we have shrines at the back of, of a building. Uh, we have even shrines in our backyard in some homes, which we call Datokong. Datokong is is basically a um, a spirit who has been staying in that area or on the piece of land that you are staying uh, much longer than us. So perhaps they've been there. Uh, for 100 years or, or, or even more. So when we build something on it, we always give peace offerings. We do not worship them, but locally, is, you know, as a paganistic practice, we, uh, well, not me, but people uh, uh, give uh, offerings. For Buddhists, what we do is we just give peace offerings of light and um, of fruits, you know, vegetarian, um, offerings, <clears throat> flowers, incense. Just, just to say that you know, just to say that I'm very sorry to have been occupying uh, your premise, and that you know, I'm you know, I'm here for whatever reason, be it an office, or be it um, your house. So it's just that we will coexist in harmony. So for for Buddhists, we do that. Yeah. So we do not worship them, but we just give them peace offerings. A lot of times we will do that maybe once, once a month, uh, just so that we can 
uh, live uh, harmoniously. Yeah, so <clears throat> that was my understanding after joining Kichara. So before that, I have no idea what Dato Kung is. I just have no idea. So what happened was the, my teacher, His Eminence Tamri uh, he was giving a talk. And then there was a lady, quite an elderly lady. I think she, at that time she was maybe in her late 60s. And all of a sudden she was singing. Um, it, it was a very strange tune, but she stood up and her arms were like this, and she was going, mm, and she was singing, and singing, and she, and then she walked towards Rimuche, and you know, and I was just a an ordinary member there, and I was very new, and I didn't know what was going on, and she was just going like this, like this, and then she was singing and doing her her her, her dance, and then all, and then after that. She was you know, she would kowtow to Rimuche three times. Then Rimuche would would bless her with a silk scarf, well, which is called a kata in uh, Tibetan. And then after that, she would take she would take trance of of another being, and it went on for quite a number of times. And I didn't know what was happening, so you know, and I was asking, hey, what's that about? And apparently, one of Rimuche's student is a medium. And she could take trance of um, local deities. So, so, and that's what happened. So, what, so, and I was told that because Rinpoche is a holy person, so, uh, so, and the local deities want to pay respect to my teacher. So, because there was a medium there, they actually, you know, uh, entered her and did a spiritual dance and a spiritual song to offer to my late teacher. So I was very fascinated because I have never seen anything of this sort. Um, and, I, and it was going on for at least a good 10, 15 minutes. And I was told that because, the, the surround, because, because nearby there were a few local deities that wanted to pay respect to my teacher. So they took turns entering her body and you know sometimes she would sound like a woman sometimes she would sound like a man and it went on and on and on and this was a regular uh, phenomenon that that I experienced when I would uh, attend Rinpoche's talk because she was there so even sometimes when we have when Rinpoche would go for a land blessing uh, same thing you know before as soon as Rinpoche sat on his his monk's throne um, again, she will take trance because because when we're doing land blessing, there are a lot of local deities, nature spirits. Um, you know, they can be demi demi. Um, what do you call it? Deities of all sorts that 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 reside. They can be mountain deities. You know, these are spirits, nature spirits that reside nearby, and they will take turn coming to pay respect to Rimuche and they will kowtow. See, they only do that with holy people, with holy beings, holy beings. So that, that was very, very fascinating. And, um, and again, they will take turns to come. And every time when, when, when a local deity enters uh, the medium, she would sound totally different. And she would sing a different tune, uh, do a different dance, and so on and so forth. Yeah? So that was my, my experience that I have seen. I, could, I cannot see it with my eyes, but I, can, but I was fortunate enough to see it, see it as they enter a medium. The only time that I kind of saw a local deity was, remember, I think a few, ses a few episodes ago, I spoke about, uh, about when I first moved into a premise that I built uh, for my teacher and I had to stay there, you know, turn on the light, just, just stay overnight to see um, how things are. And I, and I think I told you guys that um, as soon as I laid, I, you know, I laid on the mattress on the floor, um, there was a huge being that just walked towards me. And the energy was very different from any spirits. Because spirits, 
the exp the uh, feeling that I get from 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 a normal spirit is very dense. It's very it's very subtle. And if they have any malevolent intention, then there is a fear factor that that will kick in, and you just don't feel very easy when they're around. But this was a very high frequency uh, uh, feeling. It was very high frequency. It was just buzzing away, and it was huge. And it was at least I would say ten to eleven feet tall, and it was huge. And it was just standing there, hovering over me. So that was the only time that I saw. I couldn't figure. I couldn't see the features, but I could see. You know, like when we are boiling water, remember I was saying that, and there's this like mirage, this wavering mirage. It was like that, but it was huge. And it was just looking at me. And I knew instantly that it was, it was not a spirit, but something like a local deity. Because when, Rimichi, when I told Rimichi, my teacher, the following day, uh, Rimichi asked me, so what do you think it is? I said, for, for some reason, my gut feeling tells me it's a local deity. Rimichi, and my teacher said, yes, you're correct. Uh, and apparently this was a quite a, a high-ranking uh, local deity. Apparently within their realm, they have ranking. So this local deity was in charge of a much bigger area. So he was higher ranking as compared to just a lower ranking deity where, where he's just in charge of that one plot of land. So this was the entire area apparently that, that you know, we were situated in. So that was the only time that I saw um, local deities. Yeah, any questions so far? Hi Judy, hi, good evening. Hi Cogran, thank you very much for tuning in. Hi Cynthia, hi Judy, uh, okay, Martin, Emily, Aaron, hi. Uh, Aaron asks, are deities and spirits the same? Well. They are, well, deities are beings that have been around uh, much longer and they have some sort of clairvoyance. They have attained some sort of supernatural power, usually, and they are, lo they, they actually guard, let's say, they, they guard an area usually. So either it is a, you know, they guard a mountain, they guard a hill, or they guard a tree. Uh, or they guard um, a lake. So, yeah. So they are they are they are different. When we when in Buddhism we acknowledge that there are two realms that are called deities. One is the worldly god, not God in the Christian sense that they are a creator, but God as in a deity. Whereby, um, in that realm they have all the uh, supernatural powers, they have clairvoyance, but very limited, very, very limited. So a lot of these um, paganistic religions that pray or worship these, their deities actually belong to that realm. And some even belong to the, the, demi, the demigod realm, not, again, not God as in the creator, but God as in the deities. The demi, so like uh, the elementals, uh, the nature spirits, uh, the less powerful ones. So they do exist. And then, of course, you have the spirit realm uh, where, you know, where, well, they can be roaming around. Uh, and, and in the spirit realm, there, there, there are many, many types of spirits which I've spoken about. So there are these two, three different realms. In samsara, according to the Buddhist belief, there are six realms. So we have the um, worldly god realm, with the demigod realm, there's the human realm, there is the animal realm, spirit realm, and the last is the hell realm. Hell realm. Okay? So they reside in different realms, but then again, different, yeah, so we all reside in different realms, but, but once in a while we will cross over. Okay? We do cross over. Well, for animals, of course, they're, they're in our, our very dense body kind of a realm. Um, but they are stuck. They are stuck there. And in the spirit realm, if you have the karma to experience them, definitely you will be able to either see them, uh, feel them, hear them, and sometimes uh, smell them, or yeah, or sometimes you can feel that they are touching you. Okay, so there are a few ways. Yeah, I think you need to open the window. A bit too smoky. 
Okay, ma. And then open the uh, masculine netting. I think I was burning too much incense in my room, so it's a bit it's a bit smoky here. <laughs> okay, so I hope that that explains um, your question, Aaron. So again, uh, we do not worship them. We only pay respect to uh, deities, uh, and we do not ask for healing, and we do not ask for uh, lottery or any favors at all. We do not ask them. The reason is this. Although a lot of these deities, like in the Hindu pantheon, in the Taoist pantheon, and in other paganistic religion, they, they worship them and, and they, they ask for a favor, some sort of a healing, some sort of a luck, or even fertility. They have that power to do that, but there is a danger. And what is the danger? The danger is that although they do have the clairvoyance, and although some of and although these deities are they are practicing compassion, and they are trying to gain some spiritual attainment at the same time, and uh, eventually become enlightened, but you see, their clairvoyance is very limited. It's very limited as compared to an enlightened being. An enlightened being can, see, can have the clairvoyance to see all the way till we become enlightened. But for a deity, they can only do maybe see or maybe up to 100 lifetimes or less or, or whatever, but they cannot see all the way. So with all their good intentions, for granting us wishes, for giving us um, advice that, that they think will be beneficial to us. But because the clairvoyance is limited to a certain number of lifetimes, they may point us to a direction that may, that there's a risk. I'm just saying there's a risk that they may point us towards a direction that will be worse off at the end of the day. So that's why we do not um, ask them for anything at all. All we do is just peace offerings and that's it. So I'm here, you're here, and we coexist peacefully. Okay, I hope, I hope um, that explains your question. Hi Bradley, good evening. Thank you for, for tuning in. Hi Suzanne. Again, hi Bhaktu. Yes, long time no see. It's been a while. Okay, do we have any more questions? Okay, so the, another experience that I had was when um, I was following my teacher, Sam Rinpoche, to one of our members' factory. And because, you know, she was just showing us the factory because we were looking at, at places uh, to rent. Uh, for one of our, our departments back then. And she had a huge factory uh, somewhere in uh, outside of Kuala Lumpur. And as we walked in and she was saying, you know, that, you know, that her factory has been vacant for a long time. And for whatever reason, it was almost, it was impossible for her to rent it out. And whatever tenants that would come in, they, they wouldn't last. So she said that, you know, she, she just doesn't understand why, because the factory was actually in an industrial area and um, it was in a very good location. But for some reason, they just, she just cannot rent it out. So she said since she, cannot, since she could not rent it out all these, all, this, all these years, then, well, you know, then perhaps Kachara may want to just um, stay there or, you know, just rent it with a very with a nominal fee. She was actually open to that. So as we entered, we were walking around, it was huge. I think the, the land was around one to two acres. It, it, was, it was very big. And we, were, and we were walking towards the back of the factory and there was a shrine there. And the shrine was um, a bit, you know, it was unkept because there was nobody staying there. And it was quite dirty. And immediate, Im immediately, uh, Rinpoche asked me, what do you feel? And I said, oh, there, that there is a presence there. And, uh, I've, and I said that I felt that there is a, a male presence there. And Rimish said, and what else? Do you feel more people? I said, well, it's, it, it felt very busy. It felt like there's, one, there's more than one, uh, one deity there. But that, that was all 
I could sense. And Rimichi said, well, that's actually one male uh, local deity there with his family. So there's a family staying there. And Rimichi said that because the shrine was, was left, was abandoned for a long time, the local deity was not happy. So Rimichi uh, went to the, to the shrine and then uh, spoke to the local deity, just like a person he was talking. And what Rimichi said that, that, um, you know, that, the old, that he will help uh, or you know, he will actually advise the landlord, the owner, to actually uh, maintain the shrine for him and his family and also make offerings I think it was like once a month or something like that I, I forgot but it was a it was regularly making offerings and regularly making sure that the shrine would be kept clean and uh, and immediately uh, some of uh, the students who were following uh, 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 Rimache immediately went out to to buy some some drinks and some biscuits and some fruits uh, and of course light candle to offer and we did and Rimache did a, a, a land god a very quick land god uh, prayer to appease the um, land god there and Rimache said that and Rimache told uh, the owner of the factory uh, who is a student that the reason why you the, the reason why she could not rent out her place was because the was because the land god was stopping it, because he was very unhappy that his shrine was not kept clean, so he was just creating doubts and he was creating a lot of yeah a lot of mental doubts in potential tenants and whoever stay would not last long. And I was like okay, so it was the first time that I realized that local deities could actually do that and influence, and that is why. Uh, in Asia, a lot of times when we move into a new house or a new office, we always go in and we do a blessing. Yeah, it is a blessing not to not to chase them away, but it is a peace offering to bless the place, and it's a peace offering to um, nature spirits who has been there way before us, uh, land gods or you know these um, deities who has been there who have been there way before us and just to make make a peace offering so that we can again live in harmony yeah because otherwise i have heard many cases whereby people go in and you know they move into the new house or the new office and there's a lot of disharmony with the people staying there for some reason and it's just very unsettling and you know there are accounts where people get getting sick, children keep getting sick, and children keep seeing uh, spirits, and they cry at night. So there are all these signs that I mean I've not seen, but I was told. So that's why as soon as we do a peace offering, like or what we call a land god prayer, and offerings all these things will subside. And you know what, with, with regards to the factory, after we all went there and we and Rimushi did that, did the land god offering, within two weeks she had a potential tenant interested. And within that week, she's, the tenant signed up and rented the premises. <laughs> what are the chances, right? But that's exactly what happened. That's exactly what happened exactly what Rinpoche said, because Rinpoche said, uh, well, you're fine now, so you'll be able to rent out your factory, you just watch. And within, within two weeks, she could rent it out, and she was so happy, and she told me, JP, you're not going to believe this, I managed to rent out my factory, and it's been a long time, she said, and she rented out at a very good rate. Yeah, so, so it's very important that we acknowledge whatever, whatever it is, we there are so many realms, there are so many, you know, there are so many realms and so many existences that, that, are, that coexist. It's just that sometimes we, we are not able to see them and we're not able to experience them. It doesn't mean that they do not exist. Um, so, 
again, because we know as a Buddhist, we realize that they do exist, or we know that they do exist, so there are ways to coexist in harmony, in peace and harmony. That, that's my point. Yeah? Any questions so far? Okay. Bhaktu Bhaktu says, we call deities Savda. Savda. What, what, um, what language is that? Hi, LC. Okay, Cochrane asks, question, if we move into a new property, landed house or condo, should we do a house blessing to appease a local deity who may be residing inside our new house? Yes, I just said that. Definitely you should. And also, you should do that once a year. It doesn't matter what religion you are, but you should do that once a year uh, just to invoke uh, the blessings to uh, bless whatever uh, entities that may be there, you know, because we go in and out, we have people visiting us, and you don't know who bring in, who may bring in certain uh, spirits or even certain negative energies, you know, that, that are latched on to certain people and they just stay in your house. So that's why it is, it is, it is advisable to do a house blessing um, once, once a year, either in your house or in your office. Yeah, so in Kachara, we do provide such services and it's very popular because our, our members uh, realize the, uh, the importance of blessing your house at least uh, once a year. Yeah, so, and you feel a difference. After you have done a prayer to bless the house, you will feel that your house is very, very at peace and very, very uh, tranquil. Definitely you will. And if, you've, and if for whatever reasons there are any kind of spirit disturbance um, in the middle of a year, it's okay. Then after the blessing, you will, see that, you will see that the spirit is more at peace. Definitely more, more at peace. Okay? Um, unless they are malevolent spirits, uh, if you have a, a, um, an altar, if you're a Buddhist, if you have an altar there and you have a Buddha statue there that is of wrathful nature uh, that can actually ward off the spirit that is malevolent and they will not be able to enter. But of course, if they are benevolent, then it's okay. They can, roam, they can come in, of your, in and out of your house freely. And a lot of times they will even pay respect to your Buddha statue because your Buddha statue has been consecrated. So to the spirit or to the local deity, they will only see Buddha. They don't see the statue, but they only see Buddha because it has been consecrated. So they go there to receive blessings and in the energy, in the, in the formless realm, that we call them the formless realm, they are very sensitive to energies. So they can feel a, the energy of a consecrated statue. They will feel very at peace, they feel the compassion, and it gives them a moment of relief. A moment of relief. So that's why they like to hover around the altar. So don't freak out. Don't freak out. <laughs> There's nothing that they, that's, they won't harm you because if you don't see anything, then nothing's going to happen. Okay? As, a, as somebody who is practicing spirituality, for me, it's Buddhism. It is a way of us helping beings from other realms receive blessings. So even an altar like this can bless uh, beings from other realms. So out of compassion, we do that. Why not? Just like if an animal comes to you, yeah, we do a prayer for, for the animal to bless the animal. So, so that's why when we pray to help all sentient beings, it covers all these realms, definitely. Okay? Hi Lily, thank you for tuning in. Bradley, can we do the house blessing alone uh, living overseas? Yes, you can. Well, you can do, I'm not sure what religion you are. So um, if you're a Christian, I'm, I'm sure you can do a Christian prayer, which is beautiful. And you, and you go around and you, and you can um, uh, do your prayers around the house. If you are Buddhist, you can do your Buddhist prayers. Uh, what is very good to bless your house uh, or to cleanse your house is to burn uh, incense like juniper. I'm burning juniper right now. Or uh, you can burn sage. 
and you know make sure that there's a lot of smoke and you just uh, douse your, your, your house. Just every, every part of your house, just douse it. Because what, what it will do is, what these, these type of incense, what they will do is they'll actually push away any kind of negativity out of the house. Any type of negative energy out of the house, they'll just push it away. And that's all. Yeah, definitely you can do that. <clears throat> Bhaktu says, uh, Savdak, it's in Mongolian. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Bhaktu. Thank you. Uh, Lily says, yes, I agree that sometimes house guests might bring in some unseen company. I felt that eerie presence that we had, a guest that we find weird. I was suspecting that this friend is disturbed. So I tried cleansing the house by lighting incense all over the house and said some prayers. Yes, you can do that. What would be very good uh, would be to use sage. Okay, Sage, burning of sage is uh, very, very um, effective or juniper. Juniper is also very uh, effective, or frankincense is also very effective. Yeah, frankincense. Uh, we do sell that in Kachara. So a bit of commercial break there. <laughs> so we, could, we, we do sell that. You can log on to vajrasecrets.com and uh, we have all types of incense there that you can buy. They're all natural and they have different, um, different effects. Yeah, so depending on what you're looking for. But definitely we do have a lot of these for you too. Uh, bless the house. Yeah. Uh, Sharon says, "Do you have any holy water? It might work." Uh, yes, holy water uh, does work. You can have holy water. Uh, I have not tried blessing a house with holy water. I've not. So, if for those of you who have, well, share with me your experience. Okay. So, I will go on to my next experience. And let me see. Aha. Another experience that I had, and that was very fascinating, uh, with uh, local deities is, again, it was always with my teacher. There was once, uh, there was a whole group of us. I think there were at least 20, 30 of us. And we were following my teacher, Tam Rinpoche, to see a house that was for sale somewhere in the mountains um, in Kale. It's a place called Jandabaik. It was, a, it was a beautiful place, uh, it was three acres, but the, and, and the house was huge. It was, how many stories? I think at least four or five stories, and tw uh, with a build of 20 over 30,000 square feet. And it was for sale. So we just went there, you know, just to see what this beautiful place is about. And as we were at the veranda, uh, Rinpoche said, oh, there's a local deity here. And Rinpoche asked me, can you see it? I said, oh no, I don't, because I couldn't feel any, uh, anything. And Rinpoche said, oh, it is coming towards us. So everyone was looking around to see <laughs> where this local deity was. And just looking and looking and looking, and you know, I just couldn't see it. And Rinpoche says, so I guess Rinpoche knew that we couldn't see it, and we were like, I don't know, maybe some of us were a bit skeptical. Not me, because, you know, because uh, there are some beings I cannot see. I don't know why. So I was like, okay, that's interesting. And then after that, uh, Rinpoche was talking. And then Rinpoche said, okay, show, me, show us a sign that you are here. Show us a sign that you are here. Rinpoche was telling the local deity. And then Rinpoche said, to all of us, look at my glasses. Because Rimuchi was wearing glasses, okay? And when Rimuchi said that, immediately the, the, the glasses were fogging up. It was as though somebody was breathing onto Rimuchi's glasses and, it, and we saw it fog up. Everyone said, thank you. And then after that, the, the condensation just went away, just like that. It was on cue. So everyone was looking around and going, okay. And Rimuji said, well, there are, mountain, there, are, there are mountain spirits here. Okay, they're called land gods. So there are mountain spirits because we were in a, in a mountain. And there was one who, who saw Rimuji because Rimuji is a holy person. And, uh, and I guess the uh, local deity or the land god wanted to pay respect. So everybody was just dumbfounded and just um, 
in shock to see that Rinpoche's glass is fogged up immediately. And then after that, Rinpoche said, okay, thank you. As soon as Rinpoche said, thank you, the fog, you know, the fogging just went down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so that was the other experience that I had with um, these uh, land gods. Yeah, so they do exist. Definitely they do exist. Yeah. Uh, any the, what's this question? Lily says I was trying to be discreet because I don't want our guests to feel that I'm trying to repel that something negative. Okay, Freon says any incense will attract the beings rather. Any incense will attract the beings rather cast them away like those very fragrant incense. Um. Spirits can be attracted to many many things. Yeah. So even if, you're, if I'm lighting a, you know, the juniper incense right now, if there is a benevolent spirit, it's okay because they don't have bad intentions. They can still linger around and they can still um, enjoy the uh, good energies uh, from the juniper incense that I'm lighting. So it's fine. So any incense you know, that the spirits find pleasing, yes, Definitely, they can come. Definitely. Yeah. Even with the light. You see, I've lit a, a candle that, here on my altar. Uh, if you light a candle to offer to, to the Buddhas or to any holy beings, it is important to, to uh, after, you've, after you've lit it, to actually use your incense to purify it. Okay, in Buddhism, we purify it and we, and we recite Om Ah Hum, Om Ah Hum, Om Ah Hum three times. This is to prevent a certain spirit from latching on to the essence of the candle. Because there's a certain essence or a certain energy that, that spirits can actually feed on. So this certain spirit is called Trip. Trip. And this spirit, if you do not... Uh, purify it with that and prevent this spirit from getting the essence from the candle you will you will experience this that every time when you listen to any teachings be it from I mean in in our con in our context it will be a Buddhist teaching okay any teaching that will give us wisdom deeper insight you will fall asleep. You will fall asleep. And it's, it's almost, as soon as the teachers opens their mouth and start talking, giving a, a Buddhist discourse, or, you know, you will fall asleep. It has that effect. It has that effect. So that's why for Buddhists like us, we always keep our altar clean. And every time when we offer a candle to the Buddhas, we always purify with incense so that that so that the spirit will not latch on to this candle and it will create that karma for us always falling asleep always falling asleep yeah so it's very very important chung says let me be your banner white thank you chung <laughs> okay um any other questions yeah, okay, so I will continue. So, th so those are my experiences that I can remember with local spirits. Um, an another one is this. We are, again, we were following Rinpoche to Malacca. And in Malacca, there is an island called Pulau Malacca. Okay, Malacca Island. It is just off the coast of, of Malacca. And you can take a ferry there. And uh, we went there with Rinpoche because one of Rinpoche's students uh, wanted to or was thinking of investing uh, in a project there and doing a joint venture with the state government, something like that. So, and you know, but you see, Pulau Malacca is infamous for being haunted, infamous. Apparently, when it is said that when you take a ferry there, you're not supposed to drink, you're not supposed to do anything uh, 
uh, not un, uh, indecent, and you're not supposed to eat pork, and a few other things that you're not supposed to do. So uh, because if you if you do that, a lot of times the boat will capsize. That that is what is, and it is famous in Malacca. Okay, everybody knows about this. So it is. So and and when you go there, you're not supposed to drink alcohol, no pork, nothing, because. There, it is said that there is a local deity there that, is, that, was, that was Muslim. It is what we call a Datokong. And he doesn't like it when people there do anything that's immoral and eat pork and drink alcohol. He doesn't like it. So we were all excited. I was like, oh, let's go and take a look because, you know, we, because Rinpoche was there. So if anything happens, Rinpoche is there to save us. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so we all took a ferry there. there. There were quite a number of us. I think there were at least 15 of us there. So we followed and we went there, you know, and we walked around. And sure enough, as soon as you step onto the island, the goosebumps will, will come out and you feel a very strong presence. And Rinpoche said, okay. Uh, and of course, we, we, before we went there, Rinpoche said, uh, we will do a land god uh, prayer there to make offerings to the land god there and um, so we did so it was a beautiful walk we walked we walked past a um, a golf course there you know there was some resorts there but just very small resorts and um, then we then we then Rimichi, then Rimichi asked us to set up an um, a you know just a makeshift altar for Rimichi to do a prayer there to offer and appease the land gods there. So after we did the prayer, then we all stood, you know, stood, uh, I think it was on a, it was like on a bunny slope. We were, I think we were next to the beach and behind us was the ocean. So we took a picture. So after taking a picture, then one of Rimuchi's students who has a third eye and she could see everything there i couldn't i could only feel it but she could see everything she was terrified she was just you know like standing you know next to us and like just looking around like like this because she said she said much later that there was a huge huge um local deity and it was so big that when it was stand it was actually standing in the ocean and you could only, she said she could only see half the body. It was, it was like a giant. I think it was at least, what, 15, 20 feet high? At least. So he, she could only see half the body. Yeah? And, and when we were taking a picture, apparently he was standing behind us in the ocean. And what was, and what was, um, what, what freaked out many of the students there was when we looked, because after we took a picture, we shared it on our WhatsApp thread. And when we were, when we were on, uh, in the van, everybody was like chattering away and like screaming with, you know, with, with, with excitement because, because in the picture, we could see a mirage of beings standing next to certain people. We could, when we zoomed in, we could see a face on people's like, you know, abdomen area. And there were quite a few. There were quite a few spirits that, were at, that took pictures with us. We could see it. It was so clear. Because what Rinpoche said was, come everybody, come and let's all take a picture. So, <laughs> so this uh, student of Rinpoche, she said that as soon as Rinpoche said, come everybody, let's all take a picture, they all joined us, you know, in, a, in two or three rows and took a picture. And she was terrified she said because she could see them uh, taking pictures with us and these were all you know there were, it was a mixture of spirits and uh, yeah those that were with us were, were spirits but the one behind us uh, standing in the sea was actually that 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 infamous local deity that would actually capsize um, boats yeah they were capsized boats so 
and Rinpoche said that this deity has been there for a long, long time. So, you know, instead of, I mean, as Buddhists, we don't get rid of them. We just make peace offerings so that they are more at peace and they don't create um, instability uh, with people who are staying there on, on a holiday. Yeah, so that was my other experience with local deities. Is it called Pula Basa? Okay. I thought it was called Pula Malaka, no? It's called Pula Basa, is it? Okay. Yeah, Pula Basa, sorry. It is an island off of Malacca. So, um, well, I was told that, that, uh, that our, this member of us, he decided not to uh, invest in this project. Yeah, but Rinpoche said, you know, even if he does, it's fine because uh, Rinpoche, there are ways to appease the land gods there and everything will be fine. You just have to appease them by making peace offerings. Okay, so um, yeah, so Sharon says the local deities photobombed you guys. Yes, so they photobomb us. I think we do, we do have the picture. It's somewhere. I think the, 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 the Ladrang people still have it because we shared it on our groups, right? You can, you can see so clearly the you know, faces. Because when you zoom in, it was, a, it was clear, it was a face and people were like freaking out. <laughs> in the van, you were like the girls were screaming, like, ah, you know, I can't believe it's still in my in my tummy. As I, you know, like, no, it's not there anymore. You know, they were just photobombing, so it was it was quite funny. Okay, so um, Chong says, I'm from Malacca. We were never allowed to visit Pulau Besar. Yeah, because it is it is infamous. It is infamous. So we, we, we went there, and it was beautiful. Pulau Besar is actually very beautiful. It's just very unfortunate that there are no successful uh, developments there because of these disturbances. Yeah, it's very, very haunted. That's, that's for sure. Yeah? Okay, so... Um, Yi Chia. What prayers or mantras would be good to recite if we feel uneasy going into a place or hotel room? Well, if you are a Buddhist, uh, you can do Doji Shudan's mantra, Om Benza Wiki Bittana Soha, Om Benza Wiki Bittana Soha, Om Benza Wiki Bittana Soha. That, that, is a, that is a mantra uh, that would be good because that is a protector mantra. Okay, the protector's mantras are, are very, very potent to, well, protect us from, from all these. So if you feel very uneasy, if, you, if, if a fear factor comes in without your mind playing tricks on you, if you walk in and your goosebumps, you feel, you feel goosebumps, you feel very uneasy, you feel the place very dense, this is that... It's the gut feeling, yeah? It's a gut feeling with, before the mind kicks in and spook you out. Uh, it's that gut feeling. It's that, it's that first impression, that gut feeling. You should trust that, okay? If you do that, just do Om Benza Wiki Bina Soha. If you're not sure, it's still, it's still okay. Just do Om Benza Wiki Bina Soha uh, seven times, 21 times, or 108 times. And you're fine. Yeah? So that helps, okay? I, um... Some people say, can we do Kuan Yin Mantra, Om Mani Padme Hong, Om Mani Padme Hong? Uh, you can, but I, I notice that when I do Om Mani Padme Hong, they, they tend to come to me more. More of them come to me. I think they like uh, the, 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 the compassionate energy from uh, Kuan Yin's Mantra. Yeah, Kuan Yin's Mantra, Om Mani Padme Hong. Yes, they love it. So I don't know whether you want that. So... Om Benza Wiki Bina Soha, I feel, would, would be more effective if you would like them to stay further away from your room. Okay? I hope that helps. And uh, let me see. Any more questions? Karma Padma. My buddy has a condo and he is bothered by what he claims is an evil spirit. He also claims it's homosexual. Interesting. He bought juniper incense from Vajrasekhar and it worked for a while, but it got worse later. So he started burning cocaine. <laughs> really? <laughs> That's interesting. The spirit has now possessed his son. What do we do? Ah, then that is very... This is something that is very uh, serious. Definitely, you will need to go to a local Buddhist... Uh, Temple, go to a Buddhist temple with a qualified uh, monk 
or with a holy monk, with a pure monk who has experience in doing exorcism. Okay? There are prayers that you can do to purify. Definitely there, there are prayers. In Kachara, uh, because Rimache is no longer around, so, we, so because the person, the son is possessed, then uh, we cannot do much right now because uh, our, our teacher has, has uh, passed away. But when, he was, when Rinpoche was around, uh, we would request for divination to be done. And uh, Rinpoche would give uh, certain pujas to be done to purify the karma for the son and the family members who are being disturbed by this spirit. If we do not, you see, in Buddhism, uh, that we believe in karma. So karma means cause and effect. Because we have the karma to experience these disturbances, that's why whatever spirits come, they will, they, if they can disturb, they will disturb. So there are pujas that, that, that can be done to actually purify one's karma so that the spirit, even though the spirit can still be there next to the person, but, but they cannot do anything to the person. So, it's, so we get to the root of the issue and that's karma. It may take longer, but it is very effective because once you purify it, any other spirit that comes along will see you, but they cannot disturb you. That's for sure. They cannot. Okay? A lot of the other religions that, are, that I have seen, what they do is they remove the spirit. They exercise the spirit and they remove it okay but that is symptomatic so just because they have removed a spirit we have the karma for other spirits to 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 come to us and disturb us that is why i've heard many times even though prayers are done to remove to expel the spirit after a while the person experiences gets disturbed by another spirit and it keeps coming back and it keeps coming back Okay, so for spirit disturbances, it is very, very serious already. I would suggest that you go to, if you're in Malaysia, you can go to the Thai temple in uh, Patalang Jaya. You can request the monks there to, to, to help the family, or you can go to the Buddhist temple in Brickfields. They are from, the monks there are very holy, and they are from Sri Lanka, and they can do prayers there as well for you yeah i hope that i hope that helps yeah definitely don't burn any more juniper or whatever because why you will irritate the spirit more don't wear any type of amulet for protection because you will definitely prov you will definitely irritate and provoke the spirit and they will become more violent definitely so definitely get help from the monks they will know what to do yeah uh yeah, Buddhist monks, definitely Buddhist monks. Okay, they will, know, they, they will know exactly what to do. Okay, I hope that helps. Okay, hi Audrey, thank you very much for tuning in. Audrey is my cousin from, who's staying in Singapore. Look, uh, okay. Um, Cockman asked, did Rimuchi communicate with the spirits on Pula Basa? Oh, yes, Rimuchi did. Okay, Rimuchi, as you as we all know, he doesn't like to display his skills, lack of a better word. He doesn't. He's very humble. He's a monk. So a lot of times, Rimuchi, the, the, there was a situation when Rimuchi was doing the prayers. I could see Rimuchi talking, but under his breath. So Rimuchi like this, and we were all standing far away from Rimuchi because Rimuchi wanted to do the prayers alone. Okay, so Rimuchi was like this, and we could see Rimuchi's mouth moving, and he was talking, and doing his prayers, doing his prayers. But what, what did Rimuchi say? I have no idea, because we were, we were a good 50, 50 feet away from Rimuchi. Yeah, so I'm not sure. Uh, Celeste, have you had any experience with UFOs or aliens? No, but I would love to... I love reading about UFOs and aliens, and I've always loved to see them. I've always. So, but I heard from one of our members in Kachara, apparently, I don't know whether it's real or not, but he swears it's real, that when he was going back to a place called Kajang, 
uh, he once saw a UFO right next to the he was driving past and on the fields there was a UFO that landed <laughs> I asked him were you drunk <laughs> or were you high on any drugs he said no he said no he said he was just I think he was back from work or he was going to work, something like that. He was totally sober and he saw and he couldn't believe his eyes. So I said, did you get out of his car? He said, no, he just, he just drove and he was just looking, he said. I said, if it was me, I'd just park my car right next to the road and just go there and, and check it out. So, and that was, I think he said it was, um, it was like more than 15, 20 years ago that, 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 that he saw this. And he was so nonchalant about it. Yeah, so that's the only person that I know personally that have seen a UFO. Okay, I don't know anybody who has seen an alien. So, yeah, so I cannot answer that. Yeah. Audrey says, run out if you feel uneasy. <laughs> yes. So, yes, it's true. If you go, if you enter any, any house or any hotel room that you feel uneasy for what, it, you, you know, it's not your, and you know it's, it's, your, it's not your mind playing tricks on you, but you just feel very uneasy. Just request for a different room. That's it. And you just say that you want a different room in a different, on a different floor, far away from the floor. You just say, just tell the hotelier that, you know, you just don't feel comfortable. That's it. Let me tell you something. As a hotelier, all hoteliers know that there are always spirits. There are always accounts of spirits because, well, there are so many people coming in and out of, of the property so there are spirits that will latch onto them and they will stay back in the hotel so you will hear a lot of stories the staff will know that there are certain uh, complaints from guests that you know that said that you know there are spirits staying in certain rooms and in certain and they only go to certain rooms for some reason yeah so it is not new uh, and you won't freak out the staff you won't uh, yeah, you won't freak out the staff, and yeah, it's a it's a norm for, for for hotels. And talking about that, oh, I'll tell you afterwards. Let me I, let me answer some questions. There are a lot of questions now. Joy says, "Yes, we've had a lot of friends with us that day. I had to translate what Ramachi was saying to in Malay. Ramachi offered the fruits to the deity there. <laughs> really, Joy? I forgot about that. Yeah, so apparently it was a Malay deity. That's why." doesn't like it when, when, when people eat pork there. Um, thank goodness we're vegetarian, so it doesn't make a difference, right? But uh, yeah, he doesn't like it. And he doesn't like it when you do indecent, indecent activities there and you drink alcohol, he doesn't like it. Lee Ho says, JP, how about house we come in and stay once a month? Do we need to bless a house when we come in the house for once a month? Please advise. Yes, it'll be good. It'd be good that you use your, your juniper incense and you just go around the house, light it, put a protector in put a protector rice on the, on the incense and burn it. Definitely, because, you know, um, spirits can roam around, in and out, in and out, in and out. So just in case, if you don't, because you have children, and if you don't want your children to get any disturbances, then it'd be good to uh, douse your house with our juniper incense that you have. Just put a protector incense there, yeah, and visualize uh, Jodhi Shugden and your guru as one and bless the whole house. So ask Dori Shudan to come in and bless. Yeah, that's very, very powerful. You can do that, Liho. Elsie, JP, can we just recite the mantra even if we don't feel anything or goosebumps? Definitely. Definitely. When we do your daily prayers, it's, it's, very, it's very good. It's just like uh, taking your vitamins every day. So you're taking a dosage of protection every day. So definitely it's very good to do the protectors mantra for protection. Protection uh, from your negative karma arising, protection from spirits that may disturb you, maybe because you know your energy may be down that day, or maybe your karma has opened up for you to experience uh, spirits. It's actually very, very good to so just do a general protection. Yeah? Hi, Kirsten. Thank you for tuning in. Celeste, do you feel aliens are ancient deities? Um, ancient deities. No, I think that aliens are beings, are, are, are beings from a different dimension, from a different world. 
Because in Buddhism, we study about the six realms. And this includes not just on planet Earth, because the human realm can exist in other planets. And even uh, modern scientists have said recently that there are trillions and trillions of other galaxies out there. And it is impossible that, based on probability, it is impossible that only planet Earth has living beings. It's impossible. The probability is is the, the, the probability of having other beings reside in other worlds are very high. Yeah? So in Buddhism, we believe that, that the human realm can exist in other planets as well. Okay? It's just that it's too far away. We do not have the technology to, to, to get there. But the aliens definitely do. Aliens definitely do. So yes, I do believe in aliens, and I do believe that aliens... Uh, reside amongst us it's just that we are not aware we're not aware yeah I do believe in that just like spirits um, you know reside uh, just reside among us maybe they have the technology to go in and out of different dimensions that we don't have the technology to to do that but for higher practitioners of of, uh, of meditation there are certain there are very ancient uh, teachings that well, for, for I'm speaking from the Buddhism, from the Buddhist point of view, that there are texts and there are scriptures that actually enable us to do astral traveling to these dimensions. It is possible, but we don't do that because why? It's not necessary for us to do that. But I have heard my my teacher tell me that that there are ways to do astral travel because there are certain places called Shambhala. Shambhala is a realm that exists on planet on planet Earth. And it's somewhere in the Himalayan mountains. Yeah? Either you go there through you can actually enter there through astral traveling, or if you have the karma to physically find it, you have the merit to physically find it by entering uh, Shambhala via uh, an entrance in the snow capped mountains in in the I mean in the Himalayan mountain ranges. It's somewhere there. Okay? Or you can be reborn you can be reborn and take reincarnation in this place. Okay? And Shambhala, you can Google it, is a place where everybody is very spiritual and there's a king there. There's a Shambhala king there who resides there. Okay? It's a fascinating story. You can actually Google it. It's called Shambhala. Okay? Oh, time is up. It's already 11.04. I need to wrap up. Okay. Um... What else? Bhaktu asks, how does Buddhism explain aliens? What are they? Oh, I just explained that. Yeah? Elsie, hi JP. Apart from Juniper and Sage, can we use Palo Santo? What is Palo Santo? Sorry, I'm, I'm not very familiar with, uh, with that because uh, I'm only familiar with um, what we have in uh, Kachara. <laughs> Frankincense is very good. You can get that all over uh, in, in Asia. It's, it, it's very easy. To purchase frankincense, just go to an Indian shop; they'll 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 have it. Yeah, Elsie. Okay, do we have any more questions? If not, then that's about it. Ah, interesting that we're talking about aliens today. Yeah. Yes, I would love to to meet an alien. Maybe I have met an alien. I'm not even aware of it. Yeah, maybe, but definitely they are around. Okay, so if there are no more questions, then we will meet again next Thursday, 10 p.m. Next Thursday, 10 p.m. I have more stories to share with all of you, and I hope that you enjoyed today's session. Yeah, and for those of you who have been following me on my meditation program, it's now uh, changed the schedule. Instead of being daily, it's every Saturday and Sunday, 8.30 a.m. All right, so I'll see you guys this weekend. If not next Thursday. Have a great night. Bye.